Hey everybody, it's Mr. Smeads. Welcome to topic 6.12, which is wind energy. Our objective for the day is to be able to describe how we can use the wind to generate electricity or an energy source, but also to be able to understand the environmental impacts of wind energy. The skill that we'll practice at the end of today's video will be explaining the advantages to environmental solutions. So first we'll talk about how the wind can actually be harnessed to generate electricity. So we're going to start out with the kinetic energy of moving air, which is wind. Um, so it's going to look kind of similar to when we create hydroelectricity. And in this case, the wind is going to turn on these giant blades. And the blades of the turbine will capture that kinetic energy of the wind. And when they spin, they rotate this shaft in the middle. That shaft is attached to a gearbox that's going to turn these gears. And that will transform the kinetic energy of the wind into mechanical energy. And then, of course, we have a generator, as we do in pretty much all forms of electricity generation. And that generator will turn the mechanical energy here of the gearbox into an electrical current. And so, again, those steps should look relatively familiar from hydroelectricity. We're just using the wind this time uh, instead of water. Something that we should know is that the average turbine can power up to 460 homes. So this is quite a bit. Um, but it's not as sort of consistent as it might seem. So the capacity factor of a wind farm or a, a wind project, as they're called sometimes, is going to be basically the percentage of the total potential output of electricity that it actually produces. And wind farms can have anywhere from 15 to 30 percent of uh, their total potential energy that they actually produce. This is because about 90 percent of the time they're not actually producing electricity. And so they can only produce electricity when they are facing into the wind and when the wind is eight to 55 miles an hour. Now, one thing that's important to note is that they do oftentimes have basically a motor within the shaft that can position the turbine to be facing most directly into the wind to optimize this electricity production. Now we'll talk about wind turbine locations. So typically they're going to be clustered together in what we call either wind farms or wind projects. And this will oftentimes be out in rural areas. Now this is done so that we can centralize the work that needs to be done, the maintenance to uphold these electricity producing turbines, but then also to build more efficient modes of transporting that energy. So we call these transmission lines. They're basically big wires that have to carry the electricity to a population center where it'll be used. And so clustering them, uh, especially on rural areas, makes this a little more efficient. Now it can share land use, especially with agricultural purposes. So we can see a picture here of basically a field where we can grow crops, but also where we can produce electricity. So that's kind of unique. We can't necessarily do that with a lot of other forms of electricity. Uh, we can also put them offshore. So you can put uh, turbines out in the water. And this is often done in areas where you have an ocean, let's say where you have a shoreline, or even where you have a large lake like Lake Michigan. Now, this is really neat because what it does is allows you to capitalize on the fact that there are no landforms blocking the wind. So wind speeds are typically higher and you can generally get a higher capacity factor in your wind project when it's offshore. It also doesn't take up any land, uh, so you don't have to necessarily you know, disrupt habitats. But one drawback is that you're gonna have to build really far transmission lines. So those will typically be buried under the ground and it's gonna be you know, a challenge to, to transport that electricity onto land where it'll be used. So there are some drawbacks of offshore wind farms or wind projects as we call them. Now we'll go through some of the basic uh, pros and cons or benefits and drawbacks of wind energy. So the first one is that it's non-depletable and this is even better than renewable. A renewable means we can continually reuse the resource and renew it or replenish it in some way, but non-depletable means there's no way that we could possibly run out of it. So the wind will always blow as long as earth continues to spin. And so we can always produce electricity this way. Um, so that's really cool. We also have no greenhouse gas emissions at the point of electricity production, uh, no air pollution. So this is what we'd call a zero emission form of electricity. We're also not going to produce any carbon dioxide that contributes to climate change or any of those air pollutants that we know lower air quality. So NOx, SOx, particulate matter and box. So we're not going to harm human health. We're also not going to contribute to acid rain. Uh, so these are great benefits of a wind project. Then finally, we don't have to destroy or fragment habitat in the same way that we do when we mine for fossil fuels, or even in the same way as when we set up a solar farm. Remember that a solar farm oftentimes displaces uh, sol um, desert habitats, and it can fragment those, and it can take up land from organisms. And wind farms don't typically do that because the turbines are so high up in the air. 
One drawback that I do want to point out right now while we're on the subject of biodiversity and of habitats is that they can kill birds and bats. And so they can kill migratory birds, especially larger birds that are bigger and have a better chance of being hit, especially if they migrate over long distances. One thing to point out, though, we have to kind of take this with a grain of salt. Um, domestic cats, as well as habitat loss and, you know, uh, toxicity from things like animal poisons or from pesticides, these are probably much, much more significant causes of, of bird and bat biodiversity loss, but we should be aware that wind turbines do contribute to that. Another thing is that they are going to be, in some cases, considered an eyesore by some folks or considered sources of noise pollution uh, when we have the blades spinning really fast. Uh, and so this actually came up in Michigan. Many folks who own beachfront property along Lake Michigan were very upset when a proposed solar, um, excuse me, a proposed wind project was was being discussed offshore. They really didn't like the way it would disrupt their sight line. Uh, so some people might think that looks really cool, uh, but to other people, they say, hey, you know, this is my beachfront property and I don't like the idea of that. And so that's something we have to be aware of when it comes to a drawback. Another drawback is that it has intermittency issues. So just like solar, we can't generate wind electricity 24 seven. And we don't have batteries large or efficient enough to store it and then use it in times when the wind is not blowing. So what it can't do is it can't replace what we call base load power. Base load power are sources of power that are available 24 seven with no intermittency issues. So these would be things like fossil fuels, things like uh, uranium, if we're doing you know, nuclear energy production, and then hydroelectricity, for the most part, dams could be considered base load power because you're not really going to have fluctuating electricity, you know, unless your dam level drops so low that you can't generate anymore and then you have a whole different issue. And so this is really, really the big problem with wind. Um, it's great to supplement your base load sources, but we can't really at this point take fossil fuel power plants offline and totally replace them with wind. So they are a part of the solution, but again, they're not going to replace base load. And so that is kind of the big drawback, intermittency, we call it. And so for practice FRQ 6.12 today, we're going to practice this skill of explaining uh, the benefits of an environmental solution. So in this case, I want you to try to explain what's an environmental benefit that a specific town might experience if they switch from a coal fired power plant to a wind farm as their main source of energy or as one of their large sources of energy, I should say. 